In this video, we're going to talk about 430 gears and how it pertains to engine speed at any given cruising speed and how it affects your, your MPG. And this is pretty interesting because a lot of people who are interested in an F250 have the choice over a 430 gear or a 373 gear, which is typically, typically what you see. But when you go to 430, you get a lot more towing ability and uh, a lot more pulling power but the fear is that you will lose a lot of fuel economy so we're gonna get inside the truck and we're gonna see exactly how much it affects the fuel economy and how it affects the engine speeds oh and by the way my name is Sean and see you guys inside the truck all right so inside the truck here we are at about 60 miles an hour and I'm gonna reset the MPG reader so we can see exactly what MPG we're getting at 60 miles an hour with 430 gears. So at about 60 miles an hour, we're close to 2000 RPM, which is not terrible. Um, we're gonna go ahead and let the computer figure out its MPG. It'll take a second because uh, for whatever reason it takes a second, I don't know why. So at 60 miles an hour, we're at 17 point, uh, down to 16. It's not terrible for a truck this size, 15. Let's see if I can uh, turn on cruise. All right. So about 1900 RPM, 16 miles to the gallon at 60 miles an hour but i'm being tailgated right now so i'm going to raise up the speed a little bit so that we can uh, see how what the rpms are at a higher speed so let's step it up to 70. all right so at 70 the mpg starts to drop a bit it's holding 14 to the gallon so it's not terrible. It doesn't necessarily ruin the MPG like you would think because you're using a little bit more engine speed. You're also under a little bit less engine load, which is really nice about the about the 430 gears is everything that happens after the gear, between the, between the gear, the engine, the transmission, all that stuff is a little bit protected by the 430 gear because say you're plowing snow it's easier for your engine to push the snow it's easier for for everything you know and also notice the shifts are smoother you know i had a 373 uh six speed with the 62 and the gears the shifting of the of the transmission was not as smooth you could feel the shifts a lot more on this you don't feel the shifts if they feel softer everything's everything's been smoothed out by the 430 gears but i will say the engine braking feels like it has less bite than it did before. And I guess that kind of makes sense considering it now has a 430 gear. We're gonna step it up to 80 miles an hour and see how it does as far as MPG and engine speed. All right, so at 80 miles an hour, our MPG starts to drop a bit. And I will say that it really holds this speed really nicely. It, it feels effortless. It feels like it wants to be at this speed. And, you know, we're just cruising along 2,500 RPM at 80 miles an hour. And not too bad. We're doing good. I'm gonna have to get into the left lane. Left lane with the Super Duty. Looks like we're holding steady at about 13 miles to the gallon, cruising 80. Uh, hit a hill, drop down to 12, 9, 12, 8. See if we get it back as we go down the hill. Nope, didn't get it back. Uh, 12.9. So let's say high 12s for, for cruising 80 with 430 gears and there's no reason to ever really be going faster than that i i mean i don't know it's super comfortable though cruising at this speed with this truck and 
you know, I really enjoy driving it. I, I, I think the 430 gears have improved the ride quality, you know, quite a bit. The 373s were, were a bit more aggressive. Like, when you put it in drive, you felt it. It felt like it was ready just to take off quicker or take off the line. It had, you felt more of the engine. So if you think about it, the 3.73 is a step closer to one-to-one. The most aggressive, the most rough gear, as far as, say for example, a vibration in the engine or something like that, would be anything lower numerically. You'd feel more shifts, you'd feel more vibration from the engine, and as you go higher, you feel less of anything. It it it, it neuters every feeling, every vibration, uh, the way it shifts. For example, my 3.5 EcoBoost has uh, 3.55 rear gears. Those shifts are hard. You feel those shifts a lot harder than you do in a truck that has a 430 gear. But imagine if you had a 3.31 gear, which is available in the EcoBoost, you'd really feel those shifts. And depending on how much low-end torque you have, it might be better to have that lower rear that lower rear gear. For example, in the case of an EcoBoost, if you had a 3.31 rear gear, but you got 470 foot-pounds of torque at a real low RPM, that may be worth it because the torque is there. It's like having strong legs you know the 3.31 would be like a high weight gear and those strong legs would be like imagine riding a bike and you and you shift through all your gears imagine you ride a bike and you shift it out to the high gear and it's hard for you to pedal but if you can imagine if you had infinitely strong legs then you would want that higher gear because you have unlimited amounts of strength so the higher gear would be the best gear. Whereas if you, you know, were towing something with your bike, you'd want to start off low and then work and then shift your way up through the gears. So that's kind of how I think about it. The 3.3 is more of a highway gear. It keeps the speeds up. But if you got a lot of low end, if you got a lot of low end torque, then it's not a bad gear. You know, it's going to feel... Honestly, this the 430 gear. The 430 gear feels more car-like than anything because everything's so smooth. Downshifts are smooth. The engine feels smoother. The transmission, everything feels feels smoother. So it's more car-like, in my opinion, compared to the other gears. Uh, the engine braking. The engine braking seems like it was better before, and uh, seems like it has less bite than it than it ever had. But anyway, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and comment below. Uh, and I hope to hear from you soon. I read all the comments. And have a great day. Bye. All right, so we're back home from that quick drive. And it was about 10 miles. And essentially, all we did was drove on the highway and rose the speed up to 60, then 70, then 80, using cruise control and showing the RPMs. And I think at 60, we're at right around 1,900 RPMs. And at 80, we were right at 2,500 RPMs. And the MPG was high 12s, almost 13 miles to the gallon at 80. And uh, almost 14 to the gallon at 60. So this is what we're at just driving normally, getting home maybe 70 miles an hour or so, 70, 75 miles an hour, 10 miles. Uh, not too not too bad for a truck this size, but really got me thinking, you know, if the 430 gears really take that much strain off the engine, what will be the implications of using, say, a smaller displacement engine that produces a similar amount of torque, but had a 430 gear, so it was never really under as much strain as for example something that was under a 3.55 rear gear or 3.73 rear gear that could potentially give you maybe 18 to the gallon or 19 to the gallon on the highway but what if they put the 2.7 liter e-boost in a super duty kind of crazy idea comment below what you think that's it for the video thank you for watching and have a great day bye